Welcome to another episode of Quick Tech Tips and Reviews. My name is Tony and with this channel I try to bring you guys a variety of different tech related tips and content. If this is your first time with us, please consider subscribing to the channel and hit that little bell so that you're alerted to when I release new content. In today's video we're going to take a look at backing up from your Synology NAS to a third party cloud platform, in this case Google Drive, using Hyper Backup. That being said, let's hop over to the computer. Okay guys, so I'm signed into my Synology NAS and I've done other Hyper Backup videos on this channel. I'll link to those videos throughout this video. Now you might be asking yourself, why back up from Synology NAS to a third party cloud platform? Well, first and foremost is redundancy. It's never a bad thing to have multiple copies of your data in multiple places. Another reason to do this is some people use their NAS to just store files on the network, but it's not truly a backup if that's the only place those files are being kept. So sending them off to a third party cloud platform, as in this case, Google Drive, is a way of having some form of redundancy. Now that that's out of the way, let's get started with the process. Let's come on over to the Package Center, which for Synology is like the App Store. Once you're in the Package Center, click on All Packages, and if you come here, where it says All Packages, from the drop-down, just select Backup. And you'll see here you have tons of different backup solutions, but what we're looking for is Hyper Backup. Now, because I've done other videos on this channel, I already have Hyper Backup installed and running a backup task. However, if this is the first time for you, then it would say install just like it does here instead of open. So for you, if it's the first time, go ahead and click the install button and just run through the install wizard. Again, if you want to see how that's done, just resort to some of the other videos that I've done on Hyper Backup. But for now, just to move forward with the process, let's go ahead and click open. And you can see here, I do have one task that's backing up a time machine backup to an external hard drive. So what we're gonna do to get started with the third party solution is to come down here and click the plus button so that we can create a new backup task. And we're gonna select data backup. And now we're gonna look at the backup destination. Please select your backup destination type. So we're looking at cloud services. So I'm just gonna scroll down and you see the different available cloud services. You could back up to Amazon Drive, Dropbox. For today, we're gonna to look at Google Drive. So we're gonna click on Google Drive and say Next. And then it wants to link up with the appropriate Google Drive account. So I'm gonna click on my demo account. And it's just saying here, Synology Hyper Backup wants to access your Google account. So you need to allow access. So let's click the blue Allow button. Hyper Backup requires for following permission. So you have to agree to this screen here. So let's go ahead and say agree. So now we have to create the backup destination for the task. So let's click on the drop down for folder and say create new folder. And I'm just going to call this YouTube demo and say OK. And that's creating the folder on the actual Google Drive file structure. Let's go ahead and click Next. So on the next screen, it's asking us to select our folder to back up. So we have to select our source folder. So for the purpose of this video, let me just click on my music folder. I don't believe I have a lot in there, so that'll be a good folder to do for this demo. Let's go ahead and click next. And here it's asking us if we want to back up any of our applications. So we're going to skip that for now, but you have the option of doing so on this screen. Let's click next to proceed. On this screen, we can set specific task parameters like enabling notifications. Now make sure you have notifications enabled under the control panel. You see here, the little information circle, if you mouse over, it tells you, please go to control panel, notification, advanced for notification settings. You also have the ability to compress the data if you wish, enable the backup schedule and set your backup times so you can backup daily, 
weekends, weekdays, or specific days of the week. We'll just leave that set to daily. And for some reason, it's defaulting to 1220 a.m. And we'll leave that, but you can set that to any time you want. We'll leave it at 1220 for now. That's fine. By default, it enables an integrity check. And what this is, is it just checks to make sure that the task is in a good format, that it can be backed up and restored. And it sets the default on Saturdays once a week to run at 2.20 a.m. And last but not least, you have the ability of enabling client-side encryption, which is probably not a bad idea, but for the purpose of this video, we're just going to proceed and click Next. Here we can enable backup rotation, which basically lets you control how many instances of the data you want to maintain. So by enabling backup rotation, the system will automatically delete your data based on how you specify the settings here. So as you can see from the earliest settings, and you can see the timeline here, if we choose Smart Recycle, which if you mouse over the information, Smart Recycle is an intelligent backup maintainer, and then it goes on to give you detail on how it maintains the different backups, the hourly, the daily, and the weekly. And then you can see now the timeline has changed. And then again, the maximum number of kept versions. So you can change this from maintaining 256 instances to say, 15, that's probably okay. And now you can see here, it changed the timeline and you can only go back 14 days. So play around with these settings and see what works best for you. But for now, we're just gonna leave it set like this and go ahead and click apply. And finally, it's asking us if we'd like to go ahead and run the first backup, backup now. And I'm going to go ahead and say yes. I'm hoping that this doesn't take too long. I don't think I have that much music in that music folder. So let's see what happens. Okay, guys, so I had decided to cut away from the video while the process was running. In essence, it only took about two minutes. I obviously did not have a lot of data to back up. Your mileage will vary based on how much data you have. That being said, you can see here, we have a nice big green success check mark. It says that it did successfully back the data up to the Google Drive. So let's double check on that and take a look. I already have my Google Drive account here and I signed in and I'm on the drive. And this is a drive that I use just for some demo things, but you can see here, here's the YouTube demo folder that we created in that task. Now, if I open it, you can see it's just in the hyper backup proprietary format, but at least you know you have a backup of your data that can be restored. And maybe that's what we'll do in the next video is we'll do a restoration of that data from Google Drive back over to the Synology NAS. If you found any value in today's video, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out some of my other videos up above. Please remember to subscribe, like, and share. And thank you for using those Amazon affiliate links. I know they don't change your price, but they do help out the channel. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, I thank you for watching. See you next time.